Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to episode 13 of my Mountain Blade 2 a Battle Lord series as we are playing with over 100 mods. I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has been showing this series love. Normally, as Let's Plays go on and on, the audience dwindles. However, this series has just got better and better. The comments, the likes have been absolutely amazing. So I really do appreciate it. And hopefully things will just continue to get crazier and crazier as we start to sow the seed of deceit inside of Valandia. We have befriended many, many lords in this great kingdom and we can start to look to maybe, maybe creating a little bit of a rebellion faction. I'm not sure if I want to go ahead and succeed uh, or secede because that will allow me to basically take a chunk of the kingdom but not all of it and then that will also give us some more interesting challenges or if we're going to go for a straight abdication and hope to get voted in, maybe let me know down below in the comments. So we definitely have a bunch of things to do today as well as that in the current kind of stages of the campaign we are still at war with the northern empire so it would be great to maybe secure my faction and clan a couple more settlements before we do go ahead and peace out of them we recently peaced out with the southern empire and also the western empire in the last episode and also cleaning up Britannia also is probably a uh, something that we're going to be doing uh, fairly fairly soon in the last episode as well we fought that absolutely insane defensive siege battle which is stuff you don't actually get to see too often and we were like lucky enough to go ahead and defend that which was absolutely awesome i am debating whether or not to abandon this army now i'm not sure if it's something i actually do want to keep together we're also over our prison limit massively so let's quickly rush back here to go ahead and uh, sell the prisoners because yeah we're going far too slow and i definitely do want to approach my way over here to conquer a few more of these castles get involved in them siege battles you can also see up here in sturgia in the, the sturgian capital we actually do start to see a lot more of these cultural conversions the Valandian soldiers can now be recruited from here there is still a line of sturgeons but for the most part we have fully converted this region on top of that you can also see we got Mer uh, Valandian mercenaries here as well so I guess what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this arm we're gonna look for some more battles we need to build up some influence we're getting apparently nine a day which is a hell of a lot but we need to go ahead and utilize that because I still need to try and start making knights knights are what we need so that I can make more parties and again we can have up to five parties and we have we're making you know four grand a day or whatever we need to start making and strengthening our own faction let's definitely make it over to this side and this siege first because this is one of the more important settlements of the game and if we can go ahead and obtain this would be actually a really good spot i have 700 defenders so it's not like it's going to be an easy battle we could also maybe go after these armies that have seemingly caught themselves in a bit of a uh, predicament here engaging we could jump on this quite easily before the siege does kick off and kind of just mean make us a little bit safer over here i'm gonna head up here and uh, yeah maybe jump on the side of the uh, of the bandits i mean this isn't oh god i went past them let's jump in i mean it doesn't seem like they're gonna actually go ahead and win this themselves but yeah we'll, we'll dive in that's three more lords we no longer have to worry about um and some more prisoners none of which i really care about now uh and yeah again we'll take the horses because they're always valuable i'll take the resources why not but the rest of it we can utilize and then we'll go ahead and double cross them and take down these guys as well you should never trust me ever okay here we go after a pretty a long and grueling siege we are now ready to assault we have a, a siege tower a battering ram and a catapult luckily we were able to destroy the majority of their defenses which is going to be nice but this is going to be no easy battle yes we outnumber them three to one but as you guys saw in the last battle i was outnumbered three to one and we were able to claim a victory so i'm expecting this to either be an absolute slaughter on our part or a heavy heavy slog oh yeah and i remember this settlement this is not an easy one to take but now is definitely the opportunity for us to go ahead and one get our soldiers all the way back there and not let them get involved in the battle because i don't want to lose my men from my army derhart can commit his a thousand men before i decide to throw mine in but we can also start to level up our bow skill which as you can see as i get off my horse and draw this bow very slowly takes a while to go ahead and at least just because our bow skill is that bad but the idea is to basically go ahead and start leveling it up in this battle maybe getting a lord do luckily oh my god that's so different luckily once we do draw it it's honestly not too bad uh but yeah actually getting to that draw phase is pretty brutal it also has a pretty high overshot as well seemingly we have to aim a little bit lower maybe somewhere around about here 
and it does also go off in a pretty weird direction. But yeah, again, basically the goal of this battle is not to go ahead and, uh, you know, get all the kills myself. We need to start leveling up a little bit as best as we can. And of course, support the boys as much as we can. It's nice to see as well the AI actually being this aggressive. Like the tower isn't at, even at the walls and we're already climbing this part of the ladder, which is, yeah, pretty good. Also, I spy with my little eye a little soldier right there ready for the... Oh my God, it shoots so far up. Okay, one more go. And he, of course, moves away. Uh, okay, let's go over here and just aim like really low, I guess. Luckily, they all... Oh, okay, I, I don't know. I don't get this bow skill whatsoever. God damn, this looks beautiful. Just watch it. We zoom out. You guys can see the actual tower itself moving up the soldiers pushing forward like this is one a hell of a battle and yeah battle on sieges can just look absolutely beautiful as you guys can see right here we have soldiers climbing up ready to stick down the actual ladder itself and the first man charging forward against the militia hopefully won't be too difficult to take it down and as you can see they are counter assaulting trying to prevent us from getting a foothold over on this side of the siege battle itself both sides are committing everything and a lot of our two-handed weapons can't find their mark whatsoever but we are starting to make a little bit of an enclave right here and then i'm all the way back here needing to get back to the men as quickly as possible oh my god this could actually be our first kill no he runs away oh my god yeah using this bow is not good also let's go ahead and get all my men now to follow me we're gonna be going straight through the breach you can see them off in the distance come to me my men we will lead the charge through the very gates of hell themselves as they're throwing down hammers and everything else from up here. Getting our bow and obviously sniping these guys is not a bad idea because they're going to be firing down on us as we continue to push. My reinforcement should be here. So don't you dare throw that rock. I missed. No, let's get out of the way of that before that comes flying down. This siege battle is insane. Oh, shot him in my leg. Let's see if we can stop this guy from throwing that down as well quickly. Nice. We managed to get him off. Are my men here yet? They must be close. They must be close. Stop this one again. Nice. Right in the nuts. Oh, that one almost hit me as well. Getting, hopefully getting some good bow skill here as well. We're still not broken through. Hello? Where? Okay, here they are. Taking them a while to get here, but they are arriving. And then we are going to be going straight through the actual breach itself, I think, as soon as they arrive. A lot more archers up here than I was expecting. Okay, here they come, slowly but surely. And I'm hoping we'll actually get enough bow skill in this battle as well to start utilizing a bow a little bit better. Are they here yet? They're here? Yes, they're arriving. Okay, we're going to be ready to push forward momentarily. Okay, here they are. Let's go into the breach. We go push, push, push your way forward. And let's start hammering them. We need to whittle a hole through here somehow. Oh, we're pushing right. We're pushing right. Let's go. Keep on making our way here. Nice. And the good thing is as well, we're also going to be leveling up our two-handed skill in this battle, which is actually abysmally low as well. So all of these sieges are going to be a great chance for us to level up. Push him up. Push him up. Don't let him escape. I'm going to tell my soldiers to charge now. Now that we're in. And here we go. The settlement is going to be ours. You can see knights pushing on the left hand side soldiers already starting to go ahead and commit themselves up the ladders let's see if we can help out here as much as we can with our bow they're still at a pretty nice defensive position right here but we can obviously start to take out some kills we're only at 18 archery skill as well oh somebody think of the children oh there you go the infantry have now arrived these guys are being sandwiched from both sides but honestly pretty impressive they were able to oh my god my guy just fell uh, oh my god they're all falling uh pretty impressive uh considering you know we were assaulting that gate for a while so the fact that they were able to actually hold that position for as long now everybody's following them chill chill yeah considering they you know they were holding this position from the beginning they done a good job of keeping us off the ladders and it really actually goes to show as well the difference between the actual ladders themselves and the siege towers but there you go the settlement has been won i think that was a pretty guess so we lost 62 men now the Valandian army is so elite and that's why i can't i actually can't wait and nobody tell derhart this but i can't wait to actually go ahead and uh <laughs> and rebel against derhart and take a chunk of the kingdom with me this is going to be an interesting fight. Valandian on Valandian violence. 
and we'll see just who comes out on top. We have 10 kills from that battle, not bad. Only six points in our bow skill. So it's going to be a little while until we actually get into a decent point. And there is the king himself uh, telling us a good job. Or oh, we'll definitely take the longbow. Yeah, but we'll definitely take the uh, the, the pikeman. There's a savage barbarian here without any legs. Interesting. Probably avoid him, but we'll definitely take uh, the veteran longsword as well. These guys have really good armor. Uh, so we'll definitely take that. What do you upgrade into? You upgrade into these guys who look pretty cool but not something i have a need of right now and then prisoners wise we're kind of keeping our prisoners pretty tight and just having uh, the helios guard and these guys so we can recruit them when we need to also some more upgrades as well which is good a lot of the imperial soldiers we took prisoner in the last episode are now coming in clutch for us uh again not really any good loot so we'll just go ahead and give this over we don't really need loot at this point we've almost got a milli in the bank as i said our main goal is just influence really at this point uh, and boom, I would love to go ahead and take this city, which is why I'm also saving my influence right there. Oh, and tons, tons of upgrades. Oh, athletics went up. Increase your hit point regeneration while stationary. Or I guess, in yeah, definitely whilst moving. We never stay still for more than a day. Our charm is at 190 now, really? Oh my God, when did that happen? I feel like... I feel like it was nowhere near that, but I'll take it. Hell yeah. So we gain influence for every... Um, oh my God, it's going to give us incredible... We're at two... No like, when did that happen? I feel like I never was there. Yeah, we've got like 30 past 250. What the hell happened? Maybe there was like a bug with the mod list or something? Because I do change versions now and again. That is weird. But also, uh, I'm not going to say no to that whatsoever. We gain... Yeah, we're going to gain... Oh my God, that's going to kind of break the game. I, I don't really know what to do about that. Um, I mean, I guess we're just going to be getting a ton of influence now. Uh, not by my uh, my own choosing. We also leveled up our leadership from that battle as well. At the beginning of the battle, we increase your morale. We just don't need morale at this point. Our, our soldiers are so good that we're not going to be struggling too much. And we can increase the recruitment range, uh, range prisoners. That's actually really good because that will basically allow us, right? Uh, choose the same culture party leader, increase their... Uh, the morale again. Yeah, having this means we can hopefully recruit the dead eyes and stuff way quicker. Definitely, let's grab that one for sure. And our trade went up as well. When caravans destroy, we gain a bit of money. Or your workshops return. Got if the enemy land is captured, increase the price penalty or decrease the price penalty. And this one is decrease the penalty for food. Definitely the bottom one, I think. Um, even though food's actually way better. I don't know why I did that. But it is what it is. Let's keep on increasing our trade. Why not? And we'll level up our, our vigor as well. And our archery still... Yeah, I mean, no wonder our archery is actually leveling up so fast. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to restart that. We're going to take this. This. And this. Yeah. And then we're going to take this as well. And then I'm actually going to stick a focus point in archery. Uh, and then probably just level up our control a bit. Yeah, let's do that instead. Because that way we'll level up that a little bit faster. Obviously, they have all these Imperial soldiers. Any good men in the... Uh, the gap? These are actually really good. But we're actually out of limit from what I remember. And we'll go ahead and just wait a little bit of time. Let the game save. Because I'm going to spend all my influence to try and secure this city for the greatest dong empire so we actually have the vote for one of the northern cities right here and right here i don't really mind who gets it but we should probably be making friends right she already likes me plus 100 he doesn't like me too much and you despise me so let's maybe spend a tiny bit of influence here just to improve our relationship with him um and give him the settlement she likes us so much anyway so it doesn't really matter and by giving him that settlement hopefully then he might be more inclined to join my rebellion faction in a little bit i I'm saving the rest of my influence now uh, until this settlement comes up. And I'm hoping we're going to be up for it because if we're not, that's going to be frustrating. Please, please, please let me be up for it. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, so that's annoying. That's really annoying, actually. Um, okay, whatever. We didn't get this and, and, it, and our actual our enemy got it. That's actually one of the reasons why we should have probably voted there to stop our enemy from getting that because now he has that. Whenever we come to fight the, the faction, he's probably going to side with Die Hard and not us. Um, and now we're at peace, right? We just made peace after conquering this and this. So the Vlandian Empire is looking pretty, pretty good. I think the Azerai maybe might be our next target. That's actually good for us. It allows us to personally expand into the desert. These are our two settlements right here. We could maybe take these and just have this kind of clump and really control the Straits of Calradia and prevent any trade from getting through here. It'd be kind of cool if you could set up like a trading booth as well, where it's like a mini settlement coded that 
you have to go through it and it just costs them money or something. That'd be kind of a really cool thing to do. But now we have no need for this army. So let's disband it. And I guess we're going to head south to our army as we have there's nothing really for us up here whatsoever. We're also only gaining 15 influence a day, which actually isn't that much considering we were already gaining nine. So uh, it doesn't seem like that, that charm thing was actually too broken by the looks of it. Yeah, no, we're good. And a few other people leveled up as well. Uh, he leveled up his pole arm, so we'll just give him some skills and that. We got some more scouting here. Uh, definitely the bottom one. And then we have this guy who's leveled up a couple more as well. Uh, none of these are really that important. But if he does end up leading soldiers, it's also not a bad idea to grab. Okay, cool. Let's head down south now to our city. We'll see how they're looking. See if they need any more money. See if they need any more upgrades. Uh, and we'll also probably check all of our settlements as well. But first, there is a 100-man pillager unit right here. And I do have a problem, actually. You're pillaging. And I don't like... I don't act too kindly to pillagers. So I think... Unfortunately, unless you surrender, your time is now. Oh, they don't want to surrender. This is perfect. Okay, in a battle like this, we don't need to split up our infantry. We actually do not have a lot of infantry whatsoever. We have like tons of archers now. Like an absolute ton of archers. 87. And it's not like they're bad archers either. Like they're all very, very good archers. Um, as you guys can see, like it's all just elite crossbowmen. I mean, I guess that is the way to play Bannerlord. And I, I think as well, we have enough good people in our army that like the crossbows benefit from enough skills. That they're actually really deadly. Um, let's tell our cavalry to go under AI command so they can split up and go to the flanks. Let's do that. But yeah, I think now that we have enough... Um, kind of leaders and stuff our cavalry skills are actually decent enough oh some enemy lords boom a 47 damage right off the bat you're friendly as well javelin's coming out the crossbows and oh my god the crossbows are gonna demolish where's our infantry infantry oh infantry need to be in front oh because i messed up i pressed two to move them that's fine crossbows will deal with them i mean this is gonna be such an easy battle and a battle i probably should have whipped out my bow for oh why did i not do that i always forget let's come in here and bash some skulls i think they're actually already breaking or at least a large portion of them are already breaking yeah i mean but the bandits at this point in the game uh when they don't really have the ability to penetrate my armor uh, they, they just fall you know they should never they should have just surrendered honestly but they chose not to like brave warriors and now they uh now they pay the price and there we go. Victory is ours, of course. The influence is nice. Uh, again, I need to take a look at the landing. Oh, hello. Veteran manhunters going to sheriffs. I mean, you guys look fine. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you have okay stats. 200 and everything is nice, but not really something I care about. The ransackers going to manslayers. Yes, please. Manslayers are probably the best cavalry in the game. And all of these guys are nice as well because the thieves upgrade into uh, siege warriors, which are good. And I believe the bruisers upgrade into ringleaders. I don't really like ringleaders too much. They're good, but they're not like super special. Uh, so we're just going to do that. Uh, and yeah, and leave. And again, uh, oh, we could take the gear. I mean, I'll just take the food and the, the horse stuff, which we don't need. And let's continue to head south to our settlement and see how the people are loving their new overlord. Oh, I say that and I've just found a named bandit group on our way south. We are just clearing, cleansing Calradia of these bandits. He is running from me. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 we've got ourselves a battle look at him fighting the bandit lord of calradia right here peter the punisher I and mean, that's generally what my girlfriend likes to call me but that's only on a saturday night okay so here we go so i'm actually a little bit scared of this army we're gonna obviously go take a look at it after we've, we've deployed ourselves question is do we go ahead and i mean we just don't think we have enough infantry like I don't, yeah, I don't think we have enough infantry to split them up and just kind of go in that fashion. Let's go ahead and sort out our, our banners. I think we're going to have to literally kind of just play this like very traditionally, uh, get into loose formation. Maybe we can go off into a little bit on the flank just so we can get a nice little flanking shot, try and encourage them to come in with the infantry maybe a bit more traditionally, something like this, and then have the cavalry kind of back up anything that comes this way. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to deploy extra soldiers to help out as well. So definitely looking maybe as Henry can take this one. And then where is our boy Big Cheese to command the cavalry? And then we just dive in. Let's take a look at what they have because the balance of power is literally in there. Oh, that's why. That is why. Look at the cavalry force. That is scary. Infantry. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. We need to completely reform up our formation. We need our, we need our, our archers at the back by the river. And they need to basically just... I don't know whether to put them into shield wall or what. Okay, archers here. 
Infantry protect back flank and then the cavalry defend here. I think that's the only thing we're going to have to do. That's the only thing we can do. We need the archers to basically hammer them as they come into the river. And we need our cavalry to kind of keep them there as they do. And our infantry need to protect this flank because they're going to come flying in here. But then we also have their cavalry to deal with and their infantry. Yeah, I don't really know what to do here. We're going to set up like this, I guess. And they can go into shield wall. I mean, I guess I'm going to lead the cavalry off on a charge to fight one of their formations. We, I mean, their infantry is so good as well. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what to do here. This is going to be a hard battle. Uh, maybe we form a square. Do we form a square? Uh, yeah, we're going to go with a trusty square. I think that's the only thing we can do right now. Let's do it. Let's go with a trusty square like right here. Our cavalry has engaged. Let's see if we can maybe jab them. These guys are actually lightly armored. They have their missiles. Oh, they're all dead eyes as well. Oh, no. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Reform, reform. Okay, let's minimize the cavalry threat as best as we can with some, uh, some slashes to them. The square, square formation should be going great for us. The infantry fight is going good, and luckily we've engaged enough of them here that we're actually doing okay. The, the crossbows are doing their job like we said they were. The cavalry is harassing. And every, uh, and yeah, the infantry fight is going good. Their missile line scares me a lot. But our cavalry is doing an okay job. Do we decide to move? Okay, careful there as well. They've got some good weapons. Let's rotate around. Yeah, just try and minimize this, I think. Oh, they've got some good weapons here. Two-handed weapons. It's so much damage. I haven't been hit like that in forever. Okay, chill, 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 chill. Man, missiles are now hammering us as well. Crossbows, are you guys good to go yet? I don't think so. Do we make our crossbows into a shield wall? Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. One of the manslayers is down, though. That's good enough for me. Try and take this guy out. 27 damage. Can someone finish him off? Yeah, I mean, they're definitely doing a fine job at this. Our infantry bow is in a, a bad situation. Any damage we can do to these guys. We need to minimize that cavalry force. We really do. Because that just charging into us is just something we cannot deal with. Let's rotate around. Our BMC fight muscle must be over, no? Not even. It's not even over yet. Their cavalry is obviously supporting. Can you dismount him? Oh, that was so much the best teamwork I've ever seen in this game. Only 16 damage here as well. We are losing men now. Okay, our archers just are not really in the game. Push him up a little bit, I think. Their next cavalry charge comes flying in. Be careful not to get hit by that weapon. Because I think that, that one last uh, swing will do us. If we're not careful. And they have manslayers in there as well. Can I just take down a Punisher, though? But yeah, this is a very close battle. We're going to need recruits after this. And the question is, now do we stick our missiles into a shield wall formation or not? Well, not even shield wall. Do we stick them into a square? I think right now they're hammering them. And all I can do is just kind of body block for the cavalry, you know? Try and keep them off of mine and not get one shot. Only eight damage as well. Yeah, our spear is just bouncing off. Our infantry, I think, has now won. So let's get our infantry into a shield wall. And I think we're going to advance our infantry onto their... Onto their missiles. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, let's, let's push up now with them. I mean, again, my missiles have no shield. I mean, sorry, my infantry have no shields now. Okay, that's not good. Let's come in here. Luckily, hopefully, they're running a little bit low on ammunition. And we have enough armor, I think, to tank this. So let's hope. Kill that guy in the back as well. Okay, guys, just charge now. There's enough. No, don't go back. You guys need to go forward. There's like four of you fighting some of the best archers in the game. My mace will be way better off here as well. Yeah, we're doing 20 damage here with our mace, whereas our, our spear is just bouncing off. We're not getting enough speed to utilize it. Okay, our archers have to push up now as well. Our she should be tearing these guys apart. Let's hope, let's hope. I mean, I guess this is why you know, we are fighting the biggest bandit group in Caradia right now. The bandit boss, some would say. Let's move in here now. Oh, oh, God, their shields are thick. Taking a look at our casualties. Our infantry have been decimated. Actually decimated. But our archers are still remaining somewhat untouched. And now the crossbows can reload slowly but surely. And now we can continue just to, to hammer away. We can take out their archers and we can form a square. And then that's the best way to deal with killing this cavalry. Another hit right there. That's a robber knight taken down. God. And again, this will give us some good prisoners as well for our own 
uh, our own gain as well. Okay, are we are we taking them down now? Yeah, there's not many of them left now. 48 of them still. We have 114, though. Again, the majority of that is in our missiles. I think now I maybe look they're reforming. Don't let them escape. We cannot let any of them escape. Yeah, I think now maybe we form a square with our cavalry. Uh, with our archers, sorry. Avoid that couch lance. Come in. Just trying to disrupt them. Slow them up as much as possible. And we also bring our... We basically bring our cavalry over here as well. So that they have to charge into our, our line to do any damage. And then the archers can just fire off. Good on the Napoleonic tactic as they have to circle around and get hit by arrows as they do. We even have one of our night bearers right there. Get back on there, big G's. We need you. And yeah, right now they can't really do much. I think, yeah, a lot of them have routed as well, which is good. The, the loyal few who have stood by Robert the Punisher, uh, unfortunately, will find their mark here because there's just nothing for them to do. And I think at this point, we can just charge in. This has definitely been the hardest battle we have fought, though. That is for sure. And it's going to net us some good prisoners. There's a lot of soldiers I'm going to take after this. I think we're going to have to fight in another battle after this. But it shouldn't be too difficult because they'll be carrying a lot of wounded. 92 renown for that. I think we're going to be... I mean, this is the bandit boss of Garadia. So I'm happy taking that. And look at some of these soldiers. Punishers. Yes, please. I don't necessarily want all these slave drivers. I kind of like... like the skirmish infantry is good, but this is such bad armor. These guys, on the other hand, the ringleader, the rubber baron, baron sorry, have very good... Uh, 250 po arm. I think we're going to take all of them if we can. Uh, no, we're already out over our limit. Okay, we'll get rid of these guys. Um, punishes, I want to keep. The ransackers can probably go... I want to keep the Heligas Guard. The Palantine Guard can go down a little bit as well. I think... These guys can go down, probably get rid of them completely. Uh, and then maybe one of the, the, the Black Guard can go as well. I also want the Apex Predators because they're such good bowmen. I want all of these guys. Why can't I have more? The Pit Fighters are cool as well. Going up to Pit Champions. But we have to get rid of some. Okay, I think that's what we're going to do right there. Also, we only have one upgrade as well. It's just hilarious. It's because our army is just literally max rank. But we definitely lost soldiers there as well. We can have room for more men, uh, which is always nice. Uh, oh, this horse armor is actually better than mine, but does it look cooler? That is the question. That is the question indeed. Uh, so it's this one, right? I mean, it's just like heavy armor. I kind of prefer the look of my own, uh, to be honest. But there's probably some other knights that could do with it. Yeah, like you could probably do with an upgrade right there, Big Cheese. Uh, yeah, you take the male bar then because... You're not going for cool factor, whereas I am. Okay, we caught them again. 77 versus 100. I'm probably just going to fight this one off camera because we've already fought. Oh, no. Okay, I, I lied. Sorry, I take everything back. The battle is far too sick to go ahead and fight this off camera. However, I will turn up the contrast. It okay, turned up the contrast a little bit, so hopefully you guys can see this. We have three infantry left. That's not good. That's not good whatsoever. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. And we've got fire arrows as well. Oh, this is beautiful. I'll probably have to do some uh, shenanigans in my editor just to make it not uh, be this messed up. But that should be fine. They've actually got a barely... And they got a lot of cavalry still as well. Why? Why do they have so much? I mean, either way, we just have to push up with what we have. I'm going to commit my cavalry on the right-hand side immediately. And we're going to form a square and just kind of defend the line, I guess. I mean, maybe a loose formation for the first volley. And then we decide to go ahead and uh, tighten up a little bit. No, they're actually already coming in. Form a square, form a square, form a square, please. Crossbows out. Let's see if we can obviously act as a little bit of a defense here try and like disrupt their charges as much as possible the square should definitely help come in here yeah the square should definitely help as they kind of assault us i'm a little bit nervous about their infantry as well but kind of what can you do we'll come out here as well continue just to try and whittle them down oh my god we can't get a single hit off right there it's embarrassing and the main goal of this crossbow kind of formation is uh, to kind of get one stuck in the formation and someone finishes them off like that or just having them the ability to shoot in a 360 degree. So when the enemy cavalry does wrap around, there's people to shoot at them and kind of punish them for doing that type of formation. And ideally, the best way of dealing with that is also just kind of have me kind of circling around and racking up the kills as they get stuck in our formation. Okay, here they're going to come for another big charge. Hopefully, we can pick up a few more of them. Again, I should probably be a little bit more in this formation. Come on, boys. Get him, get him. Shoot him in the back. Shoot him in the back. Bring him down. Nice. Okay, that set me up perfectly. Only nine damage, though. Oh, man. And here they come. Their infantry is now coming as well. 
That's a little bit scarier, but luckily these pit fighters are lightly armored, much more aggressive glass cannons than anything else. There's another one taken care of. Uh, that's good news for us. And the crossbow should be doing an okay job as we rip through them once again. Again, it's just all about that cavalry bow. We have javelins? I don't know if these javelins will be enough to pierce. Does not look like it. Okay, I position myself over onto their archer line, basically just to whittle down their numbers and again hope for a break. Ideally, what's going to happen is we're going to break them enough that they're going to retreat, and then what we're going to do is just auto resolve the final battle to finish them off. Because I think last time we took on a bandit lord like this, it actually ended up taking about four tries to finish them off. Uh, so I think even after this victory, we're still going to be a little bit, a uh, little bit left for us to do. Okay, we've dealt with their missiles. Now let's rush back as quickly as possible. Try and take out a few more horses. And then I think they'll be, uh, be enough to, to break them. And also, if I'm blocking here as well, it's actually a really good uh, setup because then the boys can just take them out. And there's still so many of them left to take out. But yeah, if I'm just like in this formation, just body blocking, it seems like it actually does do a really nice uh, job right there. So I'm, I'm down for that. These manslayers coming in as well to get smashed out by my mace. And yeah, blocking the charge as well reduces a lot of their damage. And also the great thing about the mace is also, you know, I'm capturing people by using it. So I can't complain, even if we are getting handle hits. And there you go, the enemy flees. Still left alive, but we again took down a bunch more. The influence of Renown is invaluable because we must be closing in on the uh, the next setup right there. Again, this armor and stuff, I just don't really care for. Like, yeah, it's not, we could just sell it, but we don't need... I mean, I guess we always need money. And yes, they survived once more. We'll catch off on this. Oh, Peter, wait, what? There's two Peter the Punishers. Mount Peter the Punisher has a bunch more uh, stats than us. We'll catch him in the forest, that is for sure. And I guess we're going after the final Peter. Hey, Abel just auto-resolve this one right here. Again, plenty of renown and stuff. Don't really care too much for the uh, loot itself. Okay, that's him taken care of. I, mean, I want to go find this other one. Not that we're in a good state to do so. Okay, so I guess we're going to try and ignore this one, and then we're going to come back and hunt, yeah, this Peter. Even though he only has this many men. It's, it's all infantry as well. A hundred, oh, it's all these prisoners. That'd be a great way to resupply our line, honestly. So maybe we do rotate around, wait for some of our men to heal, because he is no wounded. And then, yeah, we wait for maybe some of our own men to heal, and then we turn around and we take him on. And maybe if another Lord wants to come in and help out, that we can also do that. Okay, I've engaged him, and I've tried to engage him on a bridge as well, because that would completely nullify his cavalry and basically allow our crossbows to have the time of their life. So let's see what map we get as we dive in right here. 108 versus 109. Pretty good odds for any Roman, if you ask me. And we didn't get it. That's unfortunate. I, I think... Oh, we've got a cool map, though, with a, a backdrop like this. I think a lot of the time, uh, Caradia expanded does do a little bit that kind of messes up a little bit the actual uh, maps themselves but that's fine we'll basically utilize this backdrop to our advantage there is no retreat no surrender whatsoever and we'll just hold the line here we have an okay amount of infantry as well i just want to make sure we kill their cavalry as quickly as possible because that is the most annoying thing to deal with so i'm going to go ahead and amass my cavalry and just charge it into them as everybody else reforms up and just hope we can maybe yeah just wheel them down a little bit before they do get stuck in uh again no like finishing kills but still a charge in is fine with me especially a nice little back thrust right there every little bit of damage does help because maybe then a crossbow can just do enough to, to finish them off and these guys in the lighter armor are way easier to actually take down than anybody else and we'll get our empty into a shield wall as well their cavalry is already harassing me right yeah their cavalry is already harassing me but uh, we can kind of switch flanks now my my cavalry is helping and these are the guys we want to probably be coming after just because they're much more lightly armored, so we can basically do a lot more damage to them as they come flying in. And I'm hoping a bunch of them are getting stuck on that back line. Or oh, we also have more Punishers coming in. I think actually maybe telling our cavalry to focus these Punishers is not a bad idea either. Uh, because, yeah, the more of these guys we kill with them. We'll charge our infantry as well at the same time. Because just dealing with this uh, and getting these guys out of uh, the, the fight is going to be good. Make sure they're not, like, one-shotting me, because I feel like these guys will be. And they'll also be dealing with our own cavalry as well. So, yeah, charge them. Missiles are, you know, having to kind of left hanging for now, but doing a decent enough job to where they're able to repel and even take some of their, like, their pound of flesh against a lot of these pit fighters and other cavalry 
attacking them. Okay, now we need to go after the missiles now that the Imshi is dealt with. And then, of course, we'll then finish up with dealing with the... Uh, yeah, then we'll finish up with dealing with the uh, the cavalry, which, of course, the hardest to deal with. But again, they've got nothing protecting this now. Their cavalry is busy fighting my missiles, which can take it. And then our MC should be turning up momentarily to help out as well. Walking slowly to the battlefield, but as any good Roman knows, they walk slowly to the engagement so they can conserve their energy. There you go. They're, they're basically finishing up what remains of their missiles. So now we can turn our focus over here, get our crossbows up as well to help out. It does seem like they're actually hyper-focusing on my own uh, infantry line, which is good if my crossbows can get in a good position to go ahead and deal with this. Again, we're looking just to maybe route these guys as much as possible. Kind of releasing at the right time is important. There's another slave master taken care of. And we might end up having to fight this army twice, which would be a real annoyance, but it does look like they are retreating. So I guess round two is inevitable. A victory is ours. Probably yeah, get another 92 renowned. I mean, these battles are insane. And look at all the troops we now have access to. Uh, this is going to be nice. We did lose about 50 of our elite men. So the Azurai veterans, sure, we actually haven't I think got, had a single Azurai veteran in my army. The elite archers of the empire, sure thing. Uh, definitely some crossbow cavalry. I will take that. Anything else? I mean, again, elite spearmen, elite Palantine Guard. Yes. I mean, it looks like we're becoming an empire uh, army right here. All these uh, all these Kuzites, which are fairly decent. We have enough space for another, uh, yeah, another decent amount. That is for sure. Okay, I've tried my best to basically just take the best soldiers. But of course, we have an absolute ton of, uh, of other soldiers as well uh, already in our army. Basically taking a lot of Imperial soldiers, which is good and bad. I can just leave them at the garrisons though, defending my settlements. So now let's... Finally, after defeating this army one more time as I chase it down, let's finally actually go to our settlement and uh, yeah, and and see what's up. We don't need any more of those. I don't need any more of this loot. We'll take the last wet, however much experience. I'm done, okay? I'm done fighting the bandit militia. I just want to see home. I want to see my wife. I want to have a child and I want to make some nights. Okay, we finally made it back home. And as you can see, everything's looking fairly decent. We're able to actually clean up a large amount of our loyalty now. And this is down to our council. We have low tax policy. We've given them autonomy and also the council effects are really helping out. The loyalty drift as well. I think the religious and cultural tensions have dramatically reduced as well. Yeah, you can see the government, uh, the cultural assimilation is actually almost completely down and the people are happy that they're fed uh, and they've got a theater. So that's going pretty well. Let's see if there's anything else we can do though to make the city a little bit happier. Right now we're building the food building. It's going to take us a while to do. Why is it taking in so long to build that? I actually don't know. 62 days now. Can we just keep on giving them money? Does that speed it up? It does. Uh, okay, I think I'm at the max of my production though now. Yeah, 45 days is probably the max now. We're actually losing a little bit of cash here, but I think we're making it from the surrounding towns, which dev does make sense. And um, we're still focusing on cultural assimilation. Uh, even though we're pretty much culturally assimilated now, are we fully upgraded here with, no, still a ton of Imperial soldiers, uh, which I guess is fine. But now, Helios Infantry, yes, please, we'll take that. Um, and then I guess we have any goods to sell. We definitely also need to buy a bunch of water as well. Not a lot here. So we're going to have to go on the lookout for that. Uh, how are we looking banner kings wise? So first off, dimension manage. Oh, no, first things off, the hierarchy. Can we usurp these properly yet? No, still hasn't been enough time. Must be edging closer though. I can't remember when I clicked these buttons, but it's probably only a matter of time until we can usurp all of these. Obviously, this is the one I mainly want to usurp because this is the county rather than the barony. And then the Dukedom of Gavos. What do you own? I mean, obviously, you own Gavos. But ideally, we want to see exactly... Uh, yeah, Gavos. Is that a settlement around here? Because that's the Dukedom we want to go for. Gavos. Is that one of the cities up here? It's the Garta. Yeah, I'm not sure where that Dukedom is situated, honestly. But that's fine. Uh, we can obviously look out at stuff later on down the line. And I'm sure if we keep on conquering land, we'll be absolutely fine at doing so. Okay, so that's that. Let's look at the dimension management right now. What are we doing? So tax policies on low. I think that's fine. We don't need money. Criminal rating, we could enlist them into the governor. Yeah, I think that's fine as well. We're encouraging mercantilism and we are not doing anything else. Military, I want to start doing this. Let's start encouraging militia and let's go for more of a range build uh, more than anything else. Um, and then let's go, yeah, enlistment. We want to focus on that. 
And then conscription. Extended conscription follows to replenish the recruitment slots faster, increasing admin costs. I'm not recruiting from here massively, so I think the standard is, is fine. Religion, we are slowly converting. Yeah, we're there. We're the bottom one right now, but this is way better than it was. Is there anything else I can do? Uh, yeah, we're focusing on construction there. Martial law could not be a bad idea either. Help out with the, the happiness. But I think that's all fine. Uh, we could also transfer some slaves, but I like all of my slaves. Um, there's no need to recruit local mercenaries, right? Legion of Betrayed Helios Guard. Hello? Can we just recruit a bunch of those? Like, what happened? Did we just get a bunch of soldiers? Yeah, it seems like we did. I'm not sure if we got, like, specifically Helios Guard or if we got a bunch of Helios trained infantry and upgrade into it. Oh, and a bunch of Helios infantry. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so let's grab you guys. Let's sort out the garrison here because we're a little bit over our limit. And then I guess we're going to go take a visit to each of our settlements. Oh, we also leveled up massively as well. Nice. So our one-handed skill went up. Training your infantry, gain more experience and more morale. We don't really need either of those things. Battle morale and garrison troops in governed settlements. I mean, none of that's good. So I guess we'll just take the bottom one. Uh, we have... Oh, this is good. Poor arm is great, though. So basically, it just means we have better skills with melee weapons. If I'm commanding them, seems amazing. Yeah, that seems really good. So let's grab that one. Uh, our cavalry is upgraded as well. We have prisoners in your party are less likely to escape. Or we get cavalry troops are better... Uh, and mana troops have more wages. Neither of these are really that good, which is a shame. Guess we'll take the bottom one, the top one, sorry. And then our medicine went up as well. High morale increases healing, which is good because we have a lot of high morale. So let's grab that as well. Okay, so I've gone ahead and reformatted my army. We actually went ahead and picked up a bunch more of these heavy infantry. Uh, a bunch of Helios Guard, Helios Guard in training. I've definitely got more infantry in this army now, which is a good and bad thing. We also have a scheme room as well. So let's go ahead and establish our scheme room here. Uh, this is part of the Forbury mod. Unfortunately, I haven't really gone ahead and done too much. However, we can assign our our, our first spy master um which i guess would be i mean he has good tactics probably big cheese big cheese is the best setup or we could wait until we get a new companion and then make him our spy master i think for now we will assign uh assign our dude here we also have agents we can start enlisting and training agents so let's start doing of that uh do we actually have to commit soldiers okay maybe we won't also eight of these uh imperial uh these imperial guard can up to palantine guard which we're definitely going to take um right now we don't have anybody to select or any clans that we're currently starting to scheme against so we'll ignore that for now um and there's no kingdom oh, we can also adjust kingdoms let's do western empire has 37 clans boom so we can now start to see their stats and i think this will basically mean again i haven't really used this tons but now this means we'll start gathering information on these guys uh we don't really know much about them right now there's one friendly clan that kind of likes us and no uh no emissaries right now working in we currently only have a five percent uh total network right there which is fine um and then we can start maybe setting some people so we could choose a clan we can see their money our relations with them any of these guys so the varos clan really hate me so let's select them and then we can select the victim their faction leader right there and then we could start doing stuff this is, oh my god, this mod is amazing. So target uh, blackmails, you'll receive part of the extorted amount. Will cost me 10 grand, clan leader only. I'll try and murder him as well. But we need spies and stuff for that first as well. Okay, so let's go back here. Because we need to get spies before we do that. Let's recruit, I don't know, um, a bunch of infantry. Let's just recruit a bunch of these guys. Let's recruit all of them, why not? Let's recruit all of them because they'll be at the bottom of my party screen. Let's do that. I know we're over our limit. Don't worry. Now let's go back to Forbury. Um, oh, sorry. Let's go back to... Um, yeah, let's go back to us. And then let's start... Uh, then let's start training uh, new people. Yeah, so let's start training new people. We need to go ahead and stick all of these guys we just picked up over here. And hopefully that will provide us with some better people. That's all of them, right? It's also really cool how they just automatically level up as well. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. Okay, so we now have that. So can we now start to actually uh, level them up? And this training, so saboteurs, they'll become spies. Okay, so we need to basically give it some time now. And then, yeah, let's start doing some sneaky stuff. I want to I wanna do that. Also, it will help to protect us as well. So let's start extorting and causing issues. And then whilst that's happening, 
I think also it would be a good idea to maybe go look to start a criminal empire over off into the east as well. So let's just walk around with our 200 men and we'll just like pop up in a city and be like, yo, let's start doing some very menial tasks right off the bat. I, I think that is the way to go. Uh, so let's head our way over here. I guess we'll start one... Maybe just in the capital. Let's start a criminal empire in like Zeneca. Because it's going to be a little while until we can make our way over and conquer it. And the, re the realms are at peace now. I don't think anybody's fighting again. Which does make it. Is anybody fighting? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, nobody's fighting. So that does mean that we, we have time to do this. And it also, it's nice to kind of space some stuff out. You know, we've been fighting wars for the past like four or five episodes. So it's good to kind of do something uh, very different. And we also got some big battles in this episode anyway. Oh my, Zeneca is uh, currently dealing with a 500-man revolt out here. That is insane. I mean, we could probably take it, but I'm not going to for now. But the other army's not going anywhere, and I doubt the Western Empire have the power to take out something like that. But that would be a very good training. Maybe what I should do is take like a half an army of like peasants and just level them up like that would be a very smart idea. Okay, let's start off with Forbury. Let's start off with a little bit of a scam. This is not going to be going. Oh, we actually succeeded as well, which is nice. So our main goal is to make one of the actual gang leaders like me they generally don't like me probably because i've been uh you know Welcome, maybe going ahead and like raiding their caravans or something that's fine uh let's go ahead and see if i can improve my skill with him and let's see I i'm tough i can win any fight i see maybe you could win a brawl oh, that doesn't work uh because the mercenaries whip out a weapon and i can't use a sword otherwise i would easily be able to take that but let's now do that um, let's see. What's this? All right. Visit my merchants in town. Grab whatever you can and run out of the gates as fast as possible. All right. Visit my merchants in town. Grab whatever you can and then run out. Okay. Let's do it. Hey, here we go. We've come to the merchants. Let's grab what something can run. Let's do it. We grab jewelry. Let's go, go, go. No, the guards are coming. The other way. Everybody's cowering. Okay. Let's go left. Let's go left. Are they still chasing me? Oh my God. The guards are angry. It's like the entirety of the, the defense. Yeah. You're scared. I'm scared. There's a horse here. Can we steal a horse as well? Okay. Easy. Easy. We had an escape car. Oh no. I went past. Off, 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 off. Run. Run. They're coming. Go. Okay. We should be good, right? How far do we have to go until this completes? Oh, God, we did it. Okay, that was fun. Uh, what a run. We gained some jewelry and we gained relations. Pretty decent relations, actually. And then what do we need for the next one? Force tribute is six. So I'm going to wait here a little bit longer um, and probably do that once more time. And then we can move on to the next objective. Oh, wow. Look at that as well. The 11 jewelry we stole is worth 10 grand. Uh, okay, who says crime doesn't pay? Because you're severely wrong. It does pay. And if we go back, we still have to wait a little bit longer before we can do this again. And then we can move on to the really fun stuff. Okay, man, let's make it a little bit more difficult. Let's go from this side. Uh, okay, we're going to grab some something. Well, I don't know what we stole. We stole some gauntlets and they're coming immediately. Uh, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Oh my God, he's got a weapon. Okay, don't hit me. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. I need to truly prove my worth uh, and go this way. This better not be a dead end. If it is, I'm going to be very... Oh my God, it looks like a dead end. It is actually a dead end. What have I done? Can I jump? No, good. We can come down here. They are chasing, though. Okay, let's keep on going. We're along the walls now. Can we get up there? We can't get up there. Oh my god, this is a dead end. What am I doing? Oh no, I've mistaken. Oh, there's so many of them as well. There's no way I can jump either, right? There's going to be no way. Oh, no, I can. I can't. No, I can't. I can't. God damn it, I messed it up. I tried to get cocky. What happens if we run out of him? Nope, doesn't work. Oh, no. You're quickly surrounded by guards. Take your weapons. Blah, blah, blah. Now we're in prison. But then we get set free immediately. That sucks. Oh, no. I don't know what they took from me as well. Hopefully nothing important. Okay, next time, just get in there and get out. And also, I think uh, maybe one of the people who actually dislikes me for doing that as well, which sucks. Okay, I think after that abysmal show of being captured, we're going to wrap up the episode here. However, next episode, we're going to start probably the first half of that campaign, just working on building up a criminal empire in Zeneca and seeing what we can do. Because we can do all sorts of stuff like gang trials, grand hideouts, insurance scams. Uh, we can incite rebellions uh, and even just take over the, the actual kind of gang itself. So there's lots of stuff to do, uh, which is going to be really fun. 
for sure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please keep on hitting that like button. Comment down below. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate it so much. It keeps these Let's Plays going. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're closing in on 210,000 subscribers each day by day we get there. And I really appreciate it. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. And fish out.